Hi everyone, this is uh, Ayende Oren again, and this time I'm with Philip, and uh, we're going to go over some uh, problem that uh, Philip has uh, run into with uh, RavenDB. So Philip, right now we see your blog post about that. Would you like to tell us what exactly is it that you're actually trying to do? Um, yeah, so just trying out uh, RavenDB there. Uh, learning and whatnot. So one of the common scenarios uh, is having inheritance um, and doing polymorphic uh, queries mm -hmm. in Hibernate. Okay. So having okay. a uh, base class of animal uh, with a derived class of dog and cat, for example, insertion to RavenDB a dog and a cat and you query out all animals and see if that it would give me a class type of dog and a class type of cat. Okay, and we see that you managed to get that work. Uh Yeah, so I had to include the, um, the convention mm -hmm. um, for that to work, and that allowed me to select out all types of animals. Mm -hmm. The next thing I tried to do was select out a specific type of animal, so select all dog, mm -hmm. and then it fell over, and I couldn't get any further than that. Okay. So the major difference. So let's see. We have a ring. We have the sample project here, and right now we're going to just save a, a, a new cat and a new dog and one in the one project. So right now what I did was give a new cat and a new dog. If we go into the home, into the uh, UI, you can see that we have these two guys. Okay, those are the things that actually interest us. Uh, and you can see here that we have several items of metadata about each of those. So here is, this is dogs, this is what collection it belongs to, and this is the uh, CLR type, what is the actual type it, it is. And what is it that you're actually uh, trying to do? You want, from here you want to get, give me all the animals? Uh, yes. And the question that I have for you is why? Because usually when you try to make polymorphic queries, there's some reason why you want to do that. Now, there are several ways that we can actually do something like that. For example, we can make queries, give me cats, and give me dogs. And this will give me both the cats and the dogs. If we just want to make a polymorphic query based on something like that, based on just give me all, based on just the types, then I can do something like this. Uh, another option um, is usually, oh, I want to be able to search cats and dogs by names. In order to do that, I have two options. And that basically, uh, that basically depends on whatever or not um, those actually just the same thing that have different uh, CLR type for some reason. For example, if you have a, a, a person and an employee and a manager, those and um, in your, and the only reason that you have those different classes is because you need to put some, you know, extra data in. But maybe you have totally different things. Maybe you have a book and a car. And Maybe maybe you want to be able to search across all of them, but you don't. They aren't really the same thing. With RevenDB, we don't treat the type. So the type of something isn't associated with where we store it or how we use it. So let's try to take a couple of steps back and ask, what is it that we're actually trying to do? Give me a, can you give me a scenario where we want to make a polymorphic query? Um, okay, well, uh, the problem that I was going to take with us to actually solve was having um, 
a object called content mm -hmm. uh, with um, the derived ones being uh, an article, another one being a podcast, and another mm -hmm. one being uh, a video. Mm -hmm. So each of those um, may have a few different or extra properties against them, but mm -hmm. all the same base data. Okay. Base properties. And so the video you... might have a URL plus, um, sorry, a description plus mm -hmm. the URL to the video. Well, an article has just got some content in it. And usually when you want to do something like that, you want you have very specific reason why you want to make a polymorphic query. Because, for example, maybe you want to be able to search on the... Um, so, maybe you want to search on the... Uh, on content, which may be an article or video, and if it's article, you want to search the content of the article, or if it's video, you want to search the notes for this video, something like that, right? Yeah. Okay. So with TravenDB, we do that by creating an index, and from the in docs docs. and if we just save this now, this would only give me docs. So let's see that. See, only docs. But the fun part is that we aren't limited to just one source for the query. You see what I just did? Yeah. Okay, and now we go here and again make a query, and you see that we get both of those. Not only that, you see that I may want to search for either one of them. For that matter, let me show you something else that is nice. Name, and I want, want it to be analyzed. And now, You see that they just got both of them? This is based on the name. Okay. So, I just, uh, right now I was very easily able to make a query on both of them at the same time. There is no need to uh, a, a note something, uh, you know what, let's do something else that is interesting. Uh, class uh, user so I'm creating a user I'm now saving a new user and going here I can see that I don't find anything with that so, I'm going to add an, another map. Now, I found the user. There is, yeah, and, and the reason this is important, there is no inheritance association that is required between the three of them. All of them just work. Yeah. Okay, so you don't have to force a, 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 to have inheritance hierarchy or something like that. If you want to search across different collections, it's very, very easy to do so. Okay? Yes. Oh, you saw that? Yeah. Hmm? That's fancy. Yeah, yeah, it just, it's a new feature of the UI that we just added. Um, I just love testing that. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, the question here, does this answer your question? Does it uh, fit for the sort of scenarios that you need? Um, yeah, it's definitely uh, going to change the way I think about modeling all this stuff. 
But my question now is how do I actually get all of that um, back in C Sharp? Oh, yeah, of course. So obviously one of the problem so one of the best things about being able to define things like that is that it allows us to play with that very, very easily. The problem with that is that it also means that it's defined externally to your code and that leads to all of the problems of okay, how do I maintain consistency between what is in that base and what the code assumes and all of the problems we are familiar with with that dreaded schema versioning thing that we have with relational databases. With RevenDB, we can define everything in code. So we define this guy. One second. Forgot the class. The yeah, yeah. I was like, what the hell is going on in here? Okay. So, and now we we define that, and now we're going to do add map of cat. Uh, Yeah, no, we don't need that. Okay, so we have all of that. And now we need to do something about it. We need to somehow tell uh, the database that we wanted to do that. We do it like this. Index creation dot create indexes. Type of everything that assembly. We pass the document store. And this we create every this we create the index for us. Usually this is how we instantiate the a document store. We create a document store and then we pass it the assembly for doing this. So we're going to do that. It will create the index that we want. And we can go to the indexes page and now we have that. So you see that we got all three of them. Again, Philip fixes and this is how this is actually defined inside the database. Okay. Notice that we turn the underscore in the class name into a slash because that looks nicer when we are doing uh, the HTTP API. But yep. this is it. And name test, so test cat, test dog, query everything, it just works. Do you have any additional questions? Um, so now if you select that back out in the code when you query against that index. Oh, so let's query against that index, that's a very interesting uh, I think we did it like that. Okay. So now we want to query against this index. And if we try to do that, this will throw an exception. Why will we throw an exception? Because we have a user in there. So why don't we do something? Why don't we just right now remove the user because this isn't part of our inheritance hierarchy. Note that because the index have changed, this will update itself. So now I'm going to basically see test dog and test a cat. Okay, you see that? Yes. 
And that's basically what you what you want. Uh, it's important to understand that if we wanted to get something more in here, so if we wanted to get all three of them, we had to have some sort of an object of a type that all three of them can be cast. Worst case scenario, we have we would have to use an object. We have to use object. So if you were to include uh, the user back in there and use object, what would that look like? Uh, what? No. Oh yeah, of course. Because remove that. So about this. Okay. See this? You see all three of them? Yes, that's great. Yeah. That's awesome. In this case, it just use object and. Stop. Uh, I just use object and that was about it. It just works for me. Because everything can be cast into an object, obviously. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. That solves all my problems. I'm very happy to hear that. Okay, so unless you have anything else, I think that would be all. Uh, no, that's uh, that's more than enough. <laughs> okay, wonderful. 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 Thank you so much, Philip, for the wonderful question and opportunity to actually discuss this and show you how this is. And for the viewers, thank you so much. If you have any questions please contact us at uh, the mailing list or to the jabber.net. Uh, there is the RavenDB room that you can use. And this is basically how Philip 